What's good, everybody? Welcome to an epic My Damn Toys video. Today, I have your WWE Money in the Bank 2020 full show review and results for you guys. You guys know how these videos work already. If you clicked on this video, we're going to run through the entire WWE Money in the Bank 2020 show, breaking down everything that happened, give you my own personal thoughts and opinions on the matches we got, on the feuds, the moments, the attires, anything that I find necessary to talk about, and everything in between. Coming into this show, you know, it's going to be another no crowd show. The Money in the Bank is supposedly supposed to be cinematic, much like we got with AJ Styles versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania. There weren't a lot of matches I was really looking forward to on this show, but usually when that happens, the show ends up being a lot better than I expect it to be. Since Money in the Bank is one of my favorite stipulation matches, I was super hyped for this show, guys. Would it live up to the hype? Would it be better than I thought originally? Would they make a terrible decision regarding Money in the Bank? We're going to all find out here together in this full show review, but good God, I hope they didn't give the freaking briefcase to Trash Corbin, and good God, I hope they didn't give the briefcase to Nia Jax. But anyways, guys, Let's shut the hell up and dive into Money in the Bank 2020. So starting off with the pre-show, guys, we did have Cesaro taking on my boy Jeff Hardy on the kickoff show, and I did not know this matchup was taking place until the day of Money in the Bank, so I did not get to see this matchup because I was, you know, preparing for some weak matchup. I didn't expect Jeff Hardy to be performing, especially against a talent like Cesaro, so I hate that I missed this matchup, but I did see that Jeff Hardy did win with the Swanton Bomb over Cesaro, and I also heard that he did not come back to No More Words, which is kind of bitter sweet because the bitter part is, you know, it's not back yet, but the sweet part is I didn't miss it while watching the show live, so I'm very hyped. I didn't miss that pop. Really excited for that music to return if it does. I like, I think they need to save that for the first live show back with crowds, but I'm glad Jeff Hardy picks up the win and it does seem like they're going to give him a little push here as he comes back to SmackDown. Hopefully we'll see on Friday, but Jeff Hardy does defeat Cesaro to start off Money in the Bank. So to start off our main show, guys, we did have the SmackDown Tag Team Championship Fatal 4-Way Match between the champions, the New Day, taking on Miz and Morrison, Grand Metalik, and Lindsay Dorado in the Lucha House Party and the Forgotten Sons. Now, coming into this matchup, I did say this could be a show stealer. It could have been one of the most underrated matchups. And, you know, all these teams can go. You know, I'm not big on the Forgotten Sons, but they impressed me in this matchup. They have a very unique offense that they were breaking out in this thing. I was intrigued the whole way through. I really wish this matchup would have taken place in front of a live crowd. I thought it was brilliant. Uh, you know, a lot of high-paced attacks. I thought that the, the match was like 90 to nothing. And uh, the only thing that was disappointing was it did seem a bit choreographed at times, which can get on my nerves, but I didn't think it was too, too bad. Maybe one or two moments here and there, but the athleticism was on point. The New Day does retain their tag titles, and I do, uh, you know, I'll go along with it. Nothing too big. I don't know why Miz and Morrison necessarily had to lose, but uh, I thought that this matchup was pretty good to start off the show. Again, would have been really cool to see in front of a live crowd with their reactions and stuff, but overall, solid little football game to open up, and I'm, I'm sort of glad, I guess, that the New Day retained their tag team championships. Next up, guys, we did have R-True taking on MVP in a matchup that I was kind of just, I wasn't really looking forward to it. You know, I don't really want to see this matchup take place in 2020. However, I was intrigued by it just to see what would happen. You know, I was figuring, oh, snap, give R-Truth a little victory right here over MVP. But that is not what happened. They got in the ring. They had a little biff and bath back and forth. Yeah, I said biff and bath. MVP pretty much just gets on the mic and then out of nowhere, here comes Bobby Trashley of all people. And I couldn't tell. It looked like MVP had Bobby Trashley way to come out like you know he kind of set it up for himself but at the same time his look on his face when Bobby Lashley came out was like who the hell is this fool what is he doing so I, I don't know what they were trying to entail I think Saxton said that MVP had Bobby Lashley waiting so if that's the story they were coming across I don't think they delivered that however R-Truth takes on Bobby Trashley and Bobby Trashley pretty much just whips Truth ass pretty much he just beats the hell out of Truth Truth gets a little bit of offense not really takes the spear one two three Truth loses I mean good god man I, I don't understand why we even had to see this? Why even do this? I guess we're going to continue this feud on. I don't really know what's going on. I would have liked to seen Truth get an upset victory or beat, you know, one-on-one -on -one with MVP. That would have been nice, to, to be honest with you. But Truth pretty much just gets wasted, and uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it for this match. It didn't really mean anything. Next up, guys, was the SmackDown Women's Championship match between Bayley and Tamina, and you guys know, if you follow the channel, you know that Tamina is one of my least favorite female performers in the entire industry. So coming into this matchup, I was not 
invested. I didn't understand why she was gifted this matchup. I just don't see the point in it. I guess just to add another notch on the belt of Bailey on her championship reign as, you know, every single pay-per-view, it seems like I say, Bailey needs this victory because, you know, she hasn't had the championship for that long. Well, now she's had the championship for a little bit and she continues to go, man. So great for Bailey in this scenario. She adds another notch here as she defeats Tamina. I will say about the matchup, I wasn't invested in it, but it was pretty physical. I was not buying the babyface aspect they were trying to push on commentary and leading up to this matchup with Tamina because Tamina's always been a heel. She's always just has been, you know, just the, the bully of the bunch. And I can't get behind that whatsoever and I don't like her in-ring abilities or her or her character. It's just, just blah and boring. But Bailey does win, which I am happy with and Tamina, yeah. This matchup was physical, I must say, but yeah, that's about it. Next up, guys, was the Universal Championship. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Next up, guys, was the Blue Universal Championship match between Jan Strowman taking on Bray Wyatt. It was not The Fiend. It was not this version of Bray Wyatt. It was Firefly Funhouse Bray, who is much more entertaining and better than The Fiend. So in this portion of the show, we did get this matchup. It was an actual matchup. It was not like John Cena versus Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania, which I thought was much better, honestly. I loved the storytelling. I loved the imagery. I loved everything about that. I thought that was beautiful. I thought this matchup was was what it was. You know, it's just a little physical matchup, guys, going back and forth. I think the story of this matchup was definitely just the story itself being told between the two. We had the Black Sheep Mask coming back from Braun. He used it to kind of lure Bray out of his shell a little bit, get him a little bit vulnerable, hits him with the Power Slam, and one, two, three, Braun Strowman retains his Blue Universal Championship and beats Bray Wyatt. Now, I'm guessing that this feud will not be over. I don't know where we go from here, but maybe we'll get some more storyline elements of these two, and uh, I'm not invested in it, but it is cool to see how they play it out and tie it to the past because I love long-term shit like that. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, Braun Strowman is still your Blue Universal Champion over Bray Wyatt at Money in the Bank. Next up, guys, was the WWE Championship match between Drew McIntyre taking on Seth Rollins in a matchup that I was very much looking forward to. And before we even get into the matchup, guys, we have to discuss Seth Rollins getting brand new entrance music that I was not a fan of, man. I was not a fan of it. It sounds really, really generic. I want to know what you guys think in the comment section below. Uh, I feel like his Burn It Down theme is is very, you know, just awesome. I, I think his Burn It Down theme is one of the best themes in all of WWE, and I understand that people have to change themes sometimes, but I don't know about this one. I really don't. I know it fits the Messiah gimmick or whatever, but I feel like maybe just removing Burn It Down from the theme and taking it back to his 2014 theme when he just split from the Shield would have been pretty cool, or, or just something else. I just think that if the theme was good to listen to, maybe I would enjoy it or understand the Switch, but the music right now, I'm not a fan of. But anyways, getting into the matchup, this was very physical. I felt like it was slow at times, but I thought that it was solid for what we got. Um, I liked it, how it picked up the momentum near the end. We had some great back and forth, some great sequences of these guys, and I enjoyed the matchup overall. At the end, we did get a Claymore kick on Seth Rollins, and Drew McIntyre does retain the WWE Championship, which is the right move. Overall, though, I did enjoy it. I, uh, You know, it is what it is. Good notch right here on the championship ring of Drew McIntyre. Can't wait to see what's next for the guy. It does seem like their feud is over because after the matchup, Drew McIntyre went for the handshake on Seth Rollins. But we will have to see just how this thing goes. I guess, you know, it remains to be seen. We will find out. But Drew McIntyre is still your WWE champion in his first title defense here. Good run for him. Let's keep this thing rolling. Alright guys, now it is time to finally talk about the main event. The Money in the Bank ladder matches both happening at the same time. I wasn't going to do it like this, but I figured it would probably be impossible to cover both of them in separate clips. So I'm just going to talk about it all in one here. As you guys can see, women on this side, men on this side. Let's dive into this thing. Starting off on the ground floor of WWE headquarters. So coming into this, I actually had some high expectations regarding, you know, they said it would be cinematic. I knew it was pre-recorded. I knew going in that it would probably be somewhat similar to what we got with the Boneyard match between AJ Styles and Undertaker at WrestleMania. And coming into this, I really did not want to see another Money in the Bank wasted because I've made a whole video talking about how the last three, four, five years in a row, actually, for me, it has been wasted, even though Dean Ambrose's was good. After that, I mean, I guess you could even say the last three in particular if you regard, you know, Corbin, Braun, and Brock. But I take it all the way back to Ambrose when he cashed in on the same night. So starting off, guys, I felt like the start was so weird. It was like the women came out and the men came out. They 
weren't even in the same area. The women were like in the lobby. The men were in the gym. It was very odd because they would just come out and the entrances were like 20 seconds apiece. They had their little name graphic. It would pop up and they would just stand beside each other like they weren't about to just fight for the money in the bank briefcase. So they just came out and stood right beside each other waiting on the next person. I was also wondering why the hell did the men start off in the gym? I just thought that was odd. Like why are they in the gym and the women out in the lobby? I don't know. I, I just thought that was kind of odd. I guess to separate them but I don't know. Just a little bit odd there. So from the jump, you know, uh, we basically Asuka jumps off of this little platform she was on. She then jumps in the elevator. The men are brawling in the gym. I thought this was pretty good, you know, uh, using the, the weights as weapons and stuff like that. Uh, a few funny moments taking place. I felt like the whole matchup itself was pretty much one giant comedic spot, which I think is it's really hard to judge because, you know, uh, I guess uh, let me get through all this and then we will discuss it a little bit. So basically, Otis takes a big barbell and he it's got a lot of weight on it. He sits it on on AJ Styles chest and it's you know it pretty much makes AJ Styles unable to move so he's sitting there yelling he's like Ray Ray Mysterio help me and then Ray Mysterio says that's loco and he runs off I thought that was pretty hilarious then brawling all over the building you know I didn't really have a problem with that I thought that was excellent I figured that's what we would get guys brawling all over throwing people into stuff throwing you know you're getting crazy at one point they get in like a cafeteria area like a catering Paul Heyman sitting there eating some food and then all the men come in the women come in all staring at each other and and Otis pretty much gets crazy, yells food fight, throws food in Heyman's face. I thought that was great. He had appearances by Doink the Clown. It wasn't even Doink. It was like Fred the Clown. I don't know what the hell is going on. He had an appearance by Johnny Ace. Dana Brooke goes in the Money in the Bank conference room. Stephanie McMahon comes in there and is, is telling her where the briefcase is. She gets a painting smashed through her head. AJ Styles walking through the hallways talking about, you know, asking where Rey Mysterio is. I don't understand that. Why wasn't he looking for the Money in the Bank briefcase? I don't know why you would go specifically after some Somebody. He had like an Undertaker room. I, I don't know. I don't know what that was about. It was like this room that was lit. Later on, AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan are brawling, and they go in Vince McMahon's office. I guess it didn't really look like Vince McMahon's office, but I guess it was. And Vince McMahon was in there, and he was telling him to get the hell out of there. And then he used hand sanitizer. I, I don't know. It was. It was basically like this whole match was just a big comedic spot. Now going into it, I guess I, I was expecting some crazy things. I was expecting some comedy spots here and there, but I felt like the whole big thing was just one big comedic spot. And while that's fine I guess, you know, you can have your comedy, you can have your interesting things, your entertaining things here and there, but at the end of the day, the briefcase is the thing that matters. You know, you have a you have a championship opportunity which is supposed to be the highest the highest thing that you can obtain in the company and they're kind of treating it like a joke, but I guess it's on mixed ground because with everything going on and everything like that, I can I kind of want to give it a pass, but I don't support who won at all. Let's just let's just get into that, okay? So they make their way to the roof and pretty much Shayna Baszler is nowhere to be found. Asuka finds herself at the top of the ladder, grabs the women's briefcase, and it's over. I was expecting Baszler to come in, knock her off, win the women's money in the bank, and that be it. But Shayna Baszler does nothing. She gets taken out by Nia, and then like five, six minutes later, Asuka wins the wins the briefcase. So that match is over. The women are done, and then here come the men. Trash Corbin launches Aleister Black and Rey Mysterio off the roof, and nobody even acted like they gave a damn. It was just, there they go over the top, and, and, and that was it. And it, they didn't show them crash landing. They just threw them off the roof, so apparently Aleister Black and Rey Mysterio are dead. So then we cut inside the ring. AJ Styles, Daniel Bryan, and Trash Corbin and Otis are all going at it. AJ Styles and Trash Corbin are at the top of the ladder doing battle, doing battle. Both of them unhook the briefcase. They're both holding the briefcase. Elias hits Trash Corbin in the back with a guitar, and Trash Corbin falls. AJ drops the briefcase, and the briefcase lands in Otis's hands, and Otis is the Money in the Bank 2020 winner. That is number six in a row that the money in the bank has been wasted. Not that I don't like Otis as a talent. I think Otis is a great character. I think he's a great gimmick and everything. He's he's hilarious at times. He can be entertaining, but when you put the WWE Championship main event on him, man, I don't know about that. I don't know how I feel about him winning the money in the bank whatsoever. I think AJ Styles would have been perfect. Daniel Bryan would have been perfect. It didn't fit Aleister Black's character, but he would have been better than Otis. I don't even know why Otis was in the damn thing. He literally won this thing just for shits and giggles, I think, which pretty much makes me think that the company just doesn't give a shit which backs up everything I've ever said about the company the last few years. It's like they just they don't care about anything, man. If you sat, if you heard Michael Cole after Oscar won and after Otis won, he didn't even sound like he gave a damn. It sounded like the most half-hearted ass audio read. It sounded like 2K, WWE 2K20, and you know when you win the money in the bank and he just goes, and AJ Styles wins the money in the bank briefcase and that, that's pretty much, the, the, yeah, he's the winner. Good night. That's basically what it sounded like. It was just really just terrible.
terrible. He sounded terrible. He sounded miserable. I don't know if he recorded that at 5 a.m. after being up all night. I don't know what the hell that was. But at the end of the day, Otis and Asuka are your Money in the Bank winners, and I don't know, man. Oh mm, my god, I, I just don't know. Like, I know a lot of people don't care. For, like, they, they don't care about the comedy. They're fine with it. Yeah, I don't either to an extent. Like, our truth I think he's brilliant. I think Otis can be brilliant, but I don't want him holding the money in the bank, you know? I don't know, man. There, I mean, there again, there were some great moments throughout the match, but at the same time, it was like too comical, maybe? I, I don't know. I want to know everything that you guys think down in the comment section below, but Otis and Asuka are your money in the bank winners, and it was it was, it was was crazy, to say the least. I did my best. Uh, Shayna Baszler choked out Rey Mysterio at one point in this match. Carmella went through a table by Nia Jax. I mean, I guess at the end of the day, you can look at it as at least Trash Corbin and Nia Jax didn't win money in the bank, which is great, but I don't know if I'm okay with the result, but I guess beggars can't be choosers, man. I don't know what to say, but that pretty much does it for my Money in the Bank 2020 review, guys. I've, I've done my job here. Overall, I felt like the show was, I don't know, like, I, I, I don't even know what the hell to say. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. What do you think of the show as a whole? What do you think of Otis being Money in the Bank? I'm not, I'm not fond of it. I don't really like it, but you know what? Here we are. Anyways, guys, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, My Damn Toys, and I will see you guys in the next video. I have a new video coming tomorrow. I don't know if it'll be afternoon or what, but I want your guys' opinion on it, so please check in tomorrow on our video, and we will let you guys know everything, but thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.